What's up guys, it's Lorenzo with Quality Mobile Video. Today we're gonna to take you through a complete car stereo installation. We'll be installing a set of six and a half inch components, six by nine rear speakers, an amplifier, and a subwoofer. We all know that asshole James, and as many videos as he's been doing on audio, he's been complaining he wants a system. So we decided to go ahead and use his 2016 Toyota Corolla. We went ahead and tested the factory audio system using an RTA. The graph clearly shows we have a ton of high frequencies, a little less mid-range, and no bass. So we're gonna change out the front speakers because there's a distinct lack of mid-range and there's not a lot of bass. Tweeters sound okay, but it's probably better to change everything out. And we're gonna change out the rear speakers because they sound like ass and have a poor sound profile. We'll be adding a 12-inch subwoofer for our boom boom and to wake up the neighbors. To figure out what size speakers we need, we go to metroonline.com and our front speakers are six and a half inch components and our rear speakers are six by nines. We're gonna leave the stock head unit because it has all the features we need, Bluetooth, steering wheel controls, and USB. Our stock system suffers from poor speakers, lack of amplification, and no subwoofer. A couple rules of thumb, when upgrading a system, a subwoofer will always give you your biggest impact. By adding a subwoofer and an external subwoofer amplifier, we can put capacitors or crossovers on the front and rear speakers to limit their bass output, in essence, giving us a little more headroom from the factory amplifier in the factory radio. Speaker upgrades provide the second largest value when upgrading. They maximize the potential of all the existing equipment. As we mentioned in the vlog, we've gone with an entire Kenwood audio system for under 300 bucks. For the front, we've chosen the KFC P709PS 6.5 inch component system. For the rear, we went with the KFC 6995 6x9 inch speaker set. For the subwoofer, we've gone with the Kenwood PW120B 12 inch subwoofer package that includes an amplifier and the 12 inch subwoofer in an enclosure. First step, disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. We'll start by running our power wire through the firewall and to the battery. We've identified a rubber grommet in which we can bring the wire through and we'll run it through the passenger compartment. Start removing the interior door threshold panels. Next we'll take out the rear seat cushion. And we'll begin removing the rear door threshold molding. And to remove the A-pillar cover, we'll just go ahead and pull the rubber boots off, do it on both sides, and then this should just pop out. Now that we've got the entire vehicle taken apart, you can see where we were gonna run the wire through the door threshold. We're gonna come up underneath the driver's side uh, footwell, and we've identified the rubber grommet in which we're gonna bring the power wire through. We've gone ahead and already put in a uh, fish. We're gonna go ahead and tie our cable off and pull it all the way through. We use a little dishwasher soap to lubricate the wire. Go ahead and just put that on there, and we should be able to easily pull this on through. Now that we managed to get our cable run through the firewall, we're gonna go ahead and run it along with the factory loom all the way to the back. So there's a good chance later on down the road we might wanna add another amp, we may wanna do something else. So since we already got the vehicle apart, we're gonna run just two uh, 18 gauge wires along with the power cable, and we're gonna tape it up to make it look just like the factory wiring. Now that we've had a chance to tape the wire off to make it look like factory, underneath the dash here, uh, Toyota uses loom tube to get to the firewall. So we're gonna go ahead and put a piece of loom there, and then we're gonna put a piece of loom on the outside piece or the part underneath the hood.
always like to bag all the hardware and mark it. That way you never have any leftover parts or you know exactly where everything is supposed to go. We're gonna go ahead and crimp our ground, then we're gonna take it inside, go ahead and solder it up, and then put some heat shrink tubing on it to make it look nice. Then we'll go ahead and wrap it in Tessa tape, and then we'll go ahead and attach it right here uh, to our grounding point. Now that we've had a chance to go ahead and solder our wire to our ring terminal and put heat shrink tubing over it, we'll go ahead and mount it to this point. But first we'll take the bolt out and then we'll use a wire brush to clean it and then we'll go ahead and put this on. Now that we got all our power wires run for the amplifier, we're gonna have to go ahead and take out the rear deck to get the rear speakers in. We're also gonna tap those audio signals, that way we're gonna use a high level input to the amplifier. The factory stereo in this car wasn't the worst sounding stereo I've ever heard, but as you can see by the, the high quality of these speakers, they're probably not gonna last very long and there was really no hope to make these sound even remotely good. So here you can see how bad a stock speaker really is. The driver actually inside of the six by nine housing actually looks to be about a six and three quarters, maybe a seven. Um, but you can see it's got virtually no magnet structure, you know, paper cone, uh, treated fabrics around, it, it's pretty bad. All right, so since our speakers are a little bit smaller than the factory ones, these are not exactly six by nines, we're gonna have to make a template or we're gonna have to make a, a mounting plate. So many people could actually do it with a jigsaw. It wouldn't be quite as nice as doing it with a router. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna make, use this as a form and we're gonna go ahead and make our own on the router. We've gone ahead and put template tape all the way around. We'll stick it onto our masonite and then we'll go ahead and route it. Now that we got our first one, we'll go ahead and attach it onto another piece of masonite and cut another one, and then we'll cut the inside. And as you can see, we were able to make these two templates using just a piece of plywood where we attach just a regular router to a pair of saw horses. Doing it this way, you have to be a little bit careful as this is in a very solid table. But if you're careful and you make sure that this piece of plywood is firmly attached, it should be good to go, but just be careful. Okay, as you can see, we now need to cut the inside. You can either use the stock grill to do it, or we have an actually a nice little six by nine former that we use. Go ahead and attach this, and then we'll route it out. Now that we've been able to make our two templates, we're just gonna paint them black and then mount the new speakers and get rolling. To make our connections at the back of the speakers and to get our uh, audio signal to the amplifier, we're just gonna use a Metro harness. Instead of cutting up the factory harness, just plug these in. We'll take two leads off to go to the speaker, two leads off to go to the speaker level and put on the amp. So we've made a harness for our speaker leads to the amp. So we're just gonna use high level inputs. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Metro harness that plugs into the factory speaker connector, connect that to our lead that is gonna to go to the amplifier, and then we'll connect another lead that goes to the new speaker. So in essence, we're gonna make a Y harness, we'll tape it all up, it'll look 100% factory.
Now that we've gone ahead and soldered everything up, heat shrinked it, what we'll go ahead and do is wrap it up with some fabric tape, make it look like the factory harness and plug everything in. Now that we've had a chance to make our speaker mounting plates, make our rear wiring harness, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down a little bit of uh, sound absorption material. You can use Dynamat, Acumat, there's a million of them out there. All we're gonna do is cover the speaker hole and around the speaker area and cut it out. So we've had a chance to clean the entire area with alcohol and now we're just gonna apply the mat. Now that we've had a chance to mount and install and run all the wiring in the rear deck, we've added a little bit of extra Dynamat just to make sure that the rear deck doesn't rattle from the subwoofer and from the new much larger woofers. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the rear deck, start putting the car back together. After getting the vehicle put back together, all we have to do now is wire up the rear speakers. We do have to mount the wiring only because there are rear torsion springs and we don't want the wiring to get caught. In the previous speakers or the factory speakers, they were wired from the top, so they never had to worry about that. So we're just going to use two little adhesive tabs with zip ties and make sure the wiring doesn't fall down and get into the springs. Now that we've buttoned up all the speakers, we've run all our wires, everything is neatly taped off. We're gonna go ahead and install the amp and finish everything in the back. There's a couple ways we could mount our amp. We could just mount it directly to the seat back, but on this particular seat, there's a couple series of ridges. It's not, very, it's not a very good way to mount this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna cut a piece of 12 inch by 12 inch MDF. That way we can mount the amp nicely, put all four screws, then we can mount our line output converter and we can do a nice job wiring and make sure we have the wire actually attached instead of just kind of free. So you can see here we have all the different ridges. It'd be pretty tough to mount an amp there. I mean, I guess maybe we could cross a couple, but uh, we want to mount the line output converter and want to be able to secure our wiring. So we're just going to attach the piece of quarter inch MDF to the back of the seat. Uh, we're going to flush the screws um, or actually countersink the screws and then mount the amp. Now that we put the piece of wood behind the carpet, we have a nice solid place to mount the amp and another solid place to mount the line output converter. We'll neatly run our wiring and uh, get the tunes playing. So we'll use 
use a cable retainer to tie off the wiring to the amplifier mounting point, and then we'll use zip ties to neatly bundle the wires together. Now that we've made all our power connections, the last thing we need to do is our high level speaker input to the line output converter and then the remote turn on. So we're going to go ahead and make our final connections and we're pretty close. Now we've had a chance to make all of our final connections, subwoofers connected, all we gotta do is connect the power up front and we should have some bass. We've showed you in the past how to connect a fuse and we'll just go ahead and make our connections. Now that we've buttoned up the back, we have the subwoofer installed, we have the amplifier installed, we have the rear speakers installed, now we're going to work on the front. So we're going to go ahead and take off the door panel on both sides, figure out what we got to work with, and go ahead and get everything put in. So since these speakers are held in with rivets, we'll have to drill off the rivets by using a drill and just a regular drill bit. So as you can see, this is probably a good reason why our sound quality isn't that great. Another top quality speaker, virtually no magnets, probably neodymium, but not very good. Here's our new woofer from our component set. Here's the original woofer. Um, the body of the woofer is actually the chassis of the woofer too. So the mounting points, everything is integrated into one piece. So as we did with the back, we had to make mounting plates. Um, it looks like we're gonna have to do the exact same thing here. I mean, we could kind of work something up with just a regular speaker adapter, um, but it looks like we should probably make these out of three quarter inch MDF as this entire enclosure is about an inch tall and you can see the difference here. We'll go ahead and set up the router, create a whole new set of plates. That way they mount right in. We'll dine them at the door, install the tweeter. To make our mounting rings, we're just gonna go ahead and trace out the shape, rough cut it with a jigsaw, use template tape to attach the piece of wood to the speaker and route it out.
now that we've finished our rings, before we can go any further, we have to figure out what we're going to do with the tweeters. The Kenwood stock tweeter comes in a, a swivel mount type mechanism. The stock tweeter, as you can see, is not very, very high quality, but just so happens to be the exact same size as the Kenwood tweeter once you take it out of its housing. And it'll even pop right into the factory housing. So we're gonna go ahead and install the tweeter. Then what we'll do is dynamat this left portion of the door with just a single sheet, mount our blocks, mount the woofer, and we should be good. So you can see the Kenwood tweeter was actually able to snap directly into the stock location. What we will do is put a little bit of epoxy on there to prevent it from backing out. Um, it's not completely firm like the factory tweeter is, so we don't want it to pop out. So we'll just put a little bit of epoxy and that should be good. So in order for us to put Dynamat in this area, we'll actually need to peel back the factory uh, vapor barrier and then we'll lay our Dynamat and put the vapor barrier right over it. Now that we've had a chance to cut out the speaker, we have the circular piece that was the cutout. We'll go ahead and apply it directly behind the speaker. There are other materials that you can use. Uh, specifically, there are some mats made specifically for standing waves, um, but we're trying to keep our cost down, so we're just gonna go ahead and use the cutout and put it directly behind the speaker to try to get some vibration out of the backside of the panel. So we've applied the Dynamat. We used a scrap behind here. We have the vapor barrier still pulled back just a little bit. The factory speaker connected uh, through the top and through the front. So what we're gonna have to do is make a little harness that comes through the back. We're gonna use uh, a metro harness that plugs directly into this. And then we'll tee it off one to the tweeter. That has an inline crossover right here. And then we'll use a little lead to the woofer. So we've soldered up both of our harnesses. Now what we'll do is use the Tessa tape tape it up to make it look like stock, and then we'll go ahead and uh, put the speaker in and tie off all the wiring. We tape both harnesses and we'll just go ahead and put them in. What we're gonna do in order to get our leads to the woofer is we're gonna run down with the factory loom and then we're gonna come down through the back side here. And then everything else will kind of loop around and tie in. So since we're gonna tuck the wire under here, we're gonna be a little bit concerned that this could rattle. So we're just gonna wrap the connector just one or two times with a little bit of tape, just to prevent it from rattling. Go ahead and reattach our vapor barrier and just mount the woofer. So now what we'll do is attach the ring to the door using machine screws and a nut with some Loctite on the back, and then we'll mount the woofer to the front. So what we'll do is apply a little bit of butyl rubber to the back to create a gasket to prevent any air leaks hook up our terminals. And now we'll do exactly the same thing we did on the driver's side, on the passenger side. So we've already gone ahead and done a little bit of the Dynamat work and now we'll just finish it up. Now that we've completely finished the driver's side, we're almost done with the passenger side. The only thing we haven't done is put the door panel back on and install the tweeter. But what we'll do here is go ahead and make our final connection, put the woofer in and screw it down.
So what we did is we took one sheet of uh, sound absorption material, just used a straight edge, scored it into different and varying widths. And all we did was cut it into small pieces and apply it in, in areas just to try to eliminate some of the resonance in the door panel. One of the final steps before we put the door panel back on is just to apply a little bit of foam-based weather stripping. The reason we do that only is so that uh, when the door ma matches up with the speaker, there's no gap between them. And if there are, it seals nicely. So now that we've applied all the weather strip, we have everything ready to go back together. So we'll just put on the door panel, uh, reattach the door mechanism, and then install the tweeter. You just want to take me home, can't get away From this paradise I'm dreaming I can't feel it in the way that you want me to go so the last thing we need to do is Toyota uses a four pin harness and it actually comes to the tweeter and all they're doing is jumping grounds and jumping positive. So you can see they put in just a single little cap on their, this is their factory tweeter and they put in a little capacitor just to prevent any base from destroying the tweeter. But internally these two leads are jumped together and those two leads are jumped together and we tested that with a voltmeter. So all we're going to have to do is make a little jumper harness to plug into the factory connector and then we'll do that. We went ahead and made our jumper, and you can see we just used four terminals. What Toyota is doing is looping the positives to one side and the negatives to the other. We showed you on the tweeter, they have a little capacitor, and then they jump down to the woofer. So all we did is to try and not cut the harness, not splice the harness, not do anything. We just used male disconnects. Um, they're the smallest size, if I'm not mistaken, they're eighth inch male disconnects. Uh, just soldered and uh, created a little jumper harness taped them all together so that way they don't individually wiggle loose and now we'll just put a piece of tape around both so that that way it just doesn't come out. Now that we've completed our install, we've had some time to tune the system. We took some before and after audio samples. That way you can hear the difference between our $300 Kenwood system and the factory stock sound system. Hopefully this install video helps you in your next install. Hopefully you picked up a tip or two. Make sure to check out qualitymobilevideo.com for all the latest gear and thanks for watching.